Welcome to episode number 29 of Mighty Morphin Ranger Danger. This is the podcast where we watch the show Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and subsequently we talk about it. One day we're going to decide on a description of the show that is easy to say. Yeah, and is also more interesting than that. <laughs> Stay tuned for that, guys. Uh, so, Tom is back on the show. Welcome yep. back, Tom. Thank you. Thank Before you. we start, I would like to tell you that our website, where you can find the show notes and whatnot, is www.rangerdangerpodcast.com. You can send us an internet email at rangerdangerpodcast at gmail.com. That's the one. Also on Twitter, we are at rangerdcast. Yep. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes and on YouTube yep. as well. And we're also on Facebook. Uh, Michael, I realise that I don't introduce you anymore. That's okay. Michael's here, guys. Hey, Michael. I'm, I'm always here. You're always here. If I'm not here, you don't know how to record. That's so definitely if true. If you're hearing it, it means that I am here. <laughs> yep, true facts. Um, so, what are we going to do this week? I was just going to sleep. I'm real tired. I kind of meant on the show. Oh. I was being a bit more specific. Okay. I know. What are we going to do this week? Uh, I think we might... We promised last week that we'd do the the Dino Charge audition sides. Yeah. So uh, just to break the illusion a little bit, we've already recorded that. We had Tim, who's been on the show and recorded the show's theme song, and Paisley, who's been on the show as well. Yep. Both came in to record the scene, and I did the stage directions. Yep. It's very exciting. It is very exciting. It's actually a very boring scene. <laughs> yeah. It's, look, it's, it's there's, not very exciting. There's no power injury, but uh, should we roll that now? Yeah, we'll put that on uh, now. Interior bus, day. Kyle, 18, is in a great mood as he shuffles down the aisle of a crowded bus in search of an empty seat. Sarah, also 18, sits alone in a double seat, headphones on her ears, tapping away on her phone. Kyle motions to the space beside Sarah. Seat taken. She gives him an unfriendly look, then scooches over. He sits down next to her. She turns her shoulder a bit. To block his view, Kyle doesn't hesitate to peer over her shoulder. Sarah pounds away a text. He squints to read the message. Idiot is I-D-I-O-T. Sarah pulls off her headphones, annoyed. Excuse me? Kyle motions towards the phone. Y- y- your text. Is the idiot your boyfriend? No, the jerk who reads other people's texts on the bus. Kyle raises his hand in surrender. Harsh. Sarah exhales and softens a bit. My mum has this new creeper boyfriend. She's forcing me to meet him. Kyle sits back in his seat and smirks. I know the feeling. I met my dad's latest floozy last night. Why can't adults just leave us out of their drama? Right? And this sugar daddy is twice her age. Seriously, my dad's girlfriend is young enough to be my sister. It was so lame. He brought her over for her birthday. She's turning 38 and he's like 50. That's crazy. My mum just turned 38. Kyle turns to her, incredulous. No, no, now you're just messing with me. Sarah scrolls through her phone message, su- messages suspiciously. Is your dad's name... Robert. Robert? The reality sinks in. They're each stunned, horrified, and embarrassed, <gasps> all within seconds. Wait, you call my dad a creeper, sugar daddy? And my mum's a floozy? They look at each other on the brink of anger. Suddenly, they both let loose a giggle. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Who would have guessed? The laughter fades as the bus stops. Kyle looks outside. This is my stuff. He stands up and turns to her. So, would you ever date a jerk who reads other people's texts on the bus? Oh, yeah. Kyle smiles. But I'd never date a jerk who could someday be my stepbrother. Kyle forces an unsure smile, then turns and leaves. End scene. And welcome back. Yep. That, that was it. Yeah. Hudson. So that's what the actors had to go on. Yeah. I think given the quality of Power Rangers actors of the past, I think we'd all agree that those guys did a better job yep. of being Power Rangers than the actual actors probably will. I mean, we'll see, but yes, probably. We do want to cast aspersions. Most yes. likely. Yes. But yeah, I, I feel pretty confident in stating. Okay, uh, there was something else I had to do. This yes. Is, this is a callback to an episode several months old. Oh boy. Your birthday present arrived. Ah, oh, right? thank you. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So this was my birthday episode, which we did. Which would have aired, what? Christmas time. Christmas time. Thank you so much. That's okay. So it is the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Zack, or Black Ranger, I guess. Yes. It's not a specific action figure. From, uh, is it Figure Arts? Yes. Yes. SH Figure Arts. So it comes with, it's got Zack or the Black Ranger, and he's got Could his... be Adam. Hopefully he's Adam, because Adam's cool. Let's assume it is. Yeah. He's got his Power Axe. Yep. And I think he's got his Power Blaster. Yep. 
I'm sure it does. He's whatever that gun sword thing is called. Yep. He also has Billy's thingy. Yeah, I don't quite know what's going on there. That's I don't, weird. I don't know why he has Billy's blue Tricera staff. Yeah, I think he might have, because I could think I can see Jason's sword in there as well. There's also the slinger thing that they got a couple oh, of times ago. Oh, the slinger. Thunder slinger, there we go. Yep. So I'm definitely going to tear this shit open. I'll be honest, show. when he arrived, he arrived during the week. Yeah. I um, I kind of want to get all of them now. Yeah, they're kind they're of cool. pretty cool. They are cool. Um, Yeah, so that's that. Thank you for that. And uh, uh, Speaking of dates, yes. Uh, next week in real time, in your time, not us recording time, is free comic book day which is the greatest holiday on the planet. Yep. Where you can go to a local comic book shop and get a free comic. Yeah, so there's a, a range of comics and you can choose one of them. That's right. And the stores generally have sales, at least that's how it goes yeah. in Australia. We usually make a big thing of it. There's, a, the gigs. there's you know, some usual stuff from Marvel and DC. I always recommend Atomic Robo's free yeah. comic book day. Always good, Atomic Robo. But the one that we want to recommend to you this year yes. is a Power Rangers comic. Yeah, a free Power Rangers comic that you can get. So Starring the original Mighty Morphin yes, Power Rangers. Yes, it's a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic. I'm not actually sure which studio it's coming out from. No, I don't think it's... A major publisher. No, but uh, I, my understanding is that it is a precursor to a regular Power Rangers comic. So yeah. if comics are your thing, or if you've always thought comics might be your thing, but you were looking for a free way to get involved, uh, head on down to your local comic book shop. Yep. On uh, It is Saturday, May the 3rd. That's right. It is always on the first Saturday in May. Yep. Uh, we'll be at our comic book shop. Yeah. Ridiculously early because that line gets hella long. That's what we'll be doing signing, so we're in for the class. We won't be <laughs> I made myself sad. <laughs> Many years from now, mate, when we're famous. Remaining um, optimistic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so be sure to go down and check that out. Yep. And, uh, you know, if you read the comic, I'm sure we'll, we, one of us will get a copy. Yeah. If you like it or you don't like it, email in and let us know. Yeah. Because uh, we'd love to hear what people think of it, especially people who aren't comic book people already. Yeah. All right, so what's this week, Matt? We'll be watching the thrilling conclusion. I wouldn't promise that it's a thrilling conclusion. <laughs> the something conclusion. I mean, look, there'll be there'll be a little person who's an elf. There'll be Zach might not completely disappear. I suspect that probably won't happen. God, I've got him in my hands now. He's a toy. That's so he true. Disappear. He, he's got full of self confidence. Yeah. Uh, Island of Illusion Part Two is what's going on, and uh, we'll be back in a sec. Yeah, don't forget that you can watch the show. Before we return, so you could have the full experience, so you know what we're prattling on about. Or you could just jump in blind and can follow r- along. Rely on us to relate the episode to you. Humorously, hopefully. Yeah, well, <laughs> again, we don't want to make promises. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys, uh, we'll be back in a sec. See you soon. Welcome back. <sighs> we just watched Island of Illusion Part 2. Yep. I don't know about you guys, but I really don't feel like that fulfilled on the promise of the first half. Nope. No, part one. Part there, one I mean, bit. look, there was an island in illusions. Yeah. So, so it lived up to the title. I guess. But. I was expecting it to be a shitty clip show. <laughs> no, it's not. We spent half the time reliving stuff that we'd already seen, and I don't ever want to relive really. <laughs> <laughs> It was horrible enough the first time. Well, we go from the top. Yeah. All right. So, Zach is disappearing. Yeah. Quagmire just appears. Yeah, it talks to the camera. Directly to the camera. The rangers are behind him looking away from him. So he, he could only be addressing us. And he basically says, Zach needs some self-confidence. I wish what he'd said was, you can skip this one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't rhyme, Matt. <laughs> you can skip this one, you guys. It won't be very Much fun a surprise. For- Pies. Look, it's good. <laughs> that's more thought than any of his rhymes in the show got. I was just about to say, like, during the episode, you're cr- critiquing his rhymes. I'm picky about the metre of rhyme. Yeah. Like, I feel like with five extra minutes, you could actually get the syllable count right. Yeah. So maybe you should just do it. Yeah. And I know that I'm, yeah, I, I know that that's a thing that I do. Yeah. But if you're going to write a character who speaks in rhyme... Most of the time. Put a bit of work into it. And don't run guys with pies. I don't listen to Michael on that one. Look, I don't, that would not have been my finished version, okay? Yeah. It's a first draft. <laughs> Needle polish. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, so that happens. And basically, he says something about only he knows Rita's plan, which the Rangers hear, but he's not addressing them. He's yeah. addressing us. And so... 
Trini, I think, just says, Quagmire. And he appears because he's compelled to appear at the sound of his own name. It also seems to be compelled to disappear whenever Fish is speaking. Yeah. Because he gets summoned about 12 times <laughs> in this episode. He, you're just thinking, dude, it's going to happen two minutes from now. <laughs> yeah. Stick around. Save yourself some teleporting. Where energy. are you going? You're going to have a drink, maybe? Maybe he goes to write the next rhyme really quickly. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. Um... So, Zack flashes back to the fight with Kanasti Knight. Well, but first of all, it's because Quagmire says, the trick here is to believe in yourself. Yeah. And then Tommy, speaking for the audience, goes, is this guy for real? <laughs> uh, uh, but no, he is for real. He is for real. The trick is just believing in yourself. So, Zack remembers that time that he defeated the Kanasti Knight. Yeah. And, uh, and he says that nasty knight was a tough dude. What I really wanted to say was that night was nasty, but <laughs> no follow through there. Um, so he yeah. he appears, he becomes corporeal again. Yeah, Billy Billy continues to just give blatantly obvious statements <laughs> repeatedly every single time. Uh, um, he he's not needed. So then we cut to Alpha and Zordon, yeah, trying to get in contact with the Rangers. This is a three minute sequence of Alpha getting zapped in the butt. Yeah, that's that's literally that's everything. Yeah, that's that's it. They, like, they make no progress. Do you want to see three close-up shots of Alpha Five butt <laughs> being hit by electricity? And him this spazzing, is your spasming a bit when that happens. It turns someone on, doesn't it? Yeah, look, there's someone out there who saw that. And was like, I gotta try that. That's my that's electro butts. That's my <laughs> fetish. I figured it out now. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. <laughs> it's tough to find a girl who's into electro butts, but when you do, Matt. <laughs> Uh, it's a good time filler, I guess. Oh, dear. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it is a yeah, time filler, It is yes. a time filler, yeah. And when he does the little running around and bumping into things at the command centre, we've seen that like three times and it still annoys me so It's much. not funny ever. It's not funny and it's not... Because each time he just bumps into a wall and then sets back a bit. Like, it just, it's the same thing <laughs> over and over. Ah! And if you thought that was bad, we now go back to the Island of Illusion for the most disgusting thing we've ever seen on this show. Angel Shakespeare Balkan Skull. Oh boy, yeah. So this is Kimberly's illusion. And uh, basically Balkan Skull have like white robes, silver like prop halos, yeah. and silver prop angel wings. Yeah, they're still kind of wearing their clothes underneath. And are talking in kind of faux Shakespearean yeah. dialogue. And helping, like, a turtle or a frog... I guess a turtle. ...get hot. It, t- we don't see it. It could just be a rock. Yeah. Uh, but they're helping it get back to the water or something. And Kimberly says, if Rita can make them act like that, what else could she do? Which is... That, this, this, that was the part of the episode where I you almost audibly, walked out of the you room. You audibly went, oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like... Why is that what she's afraid of? And how does thinking about a battle help her overcome that? <laughs> I don't... Not only that, like, it just... It doesn't... What Bog and Skull were doing wasn't frightening. It also wasn't sort of a show of power. Yeah. It was just... I like, guess it was a radical around. change in their behaviour. So, yeah. Yeah. No. It, it wasn't... Ah. Quite, no. Like, no. Um... Quagmire teleports in. Yeah. At this point, Trini basically is just, they, they kind of go, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And Trini's the only sensible one who goes, Quagmire. And he teleports in. He says, you must remember fighting something, 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 bum thing, cum thing. <laughs> Look, I'm writing, these rhymes, I'm writing these rhymes on the spot, guys. Okay, give me a bit of credit. Um... That was not. I'm really looking forward to your bum thing, bum thing <laughs> with a <the> poetry. <laughs> um, so. Is that like dirty Dr. Seuss? <laughs> One thing, two thing, bum thing, bum thing. <laughs> oh, dear. oh, dear. God. Oh, God. Uh, so, Kimberly flashes back to the fight with the Terror Toad, I believe his name was. Yeah. Ah. Uh, what is it, Trini, that we just did? No, it was oh, Kimberly. Kimberly. no, you're right, yeah. Because yeah. so, Kimberly had to use her power bow to defeat the Terror Toad. Think about this was every time I saw a flash of these episodes, I remember watching episodes and be like, yeah, 
this was a much better episode. <laughs> yeah, it happened every time, and it just served to make me angrier and angrier. They did flash back to kind of like probably the best couple of episodes yeah. too. So next is Tommy. Yeah. And Tommy's is kind of almost interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's the closest it came to being. He sees the other rangers as putties. Yeah. Now, look, what he says is, there's a million of them. Yeah. There's five. Yeah. <laughs> we don't even get, like, a fake special effect, so it looks like there's more than five. No. There's definitely just five no. of them. Clear and obvious five of them, yeah. But, you know, we get some shots of the putties doing what the rangers are doing, and... Yeah, so uh, just to explain for the people who've seen... He sees the other rangers as putties. Yes. Yeah. So he does a bit of fighting with Jason, thinking Jason is a putty. You know what would have been interesting? What? If this happened to Tommy, yep. and Tommy was fighting them, and then that caused them to sort of flash back to when he was evil and fighting them, and that sort of caused their fear thing? Yeah, that's not what happened. No. No. That, 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 Tommy's that... fear is that he will have to fight five putty patrollers at once. <laughs> and so he flashes back to a time when he defeated... Three putty patrollers, <laughs> and uh, that provides him with, which I think was from Green with Evil. Yeah, and that provides him with enough mental confidence, power. Yeah, Quagmire says something to him. Yeah, he doesn't see Quagmire as a putty because <laughs> that was silly. A midget. There's no midget putties. <laughs> they wouldn't hire them. Oh, Tr- Trini's was the next one. Yes. She just sort of sat down and lost herself. She yes. just lost so her shit. And became... Trini's fear is this bizarre meta fear. Her fear is that it she could be the fear. next one yeah. that they go after. Yeah. Which I guess she is. And by being afraid of it, yeah. she becomes the next one that they go after. They put a bit of thought into that one at least. <laughs> well, there's something, to there's me, something there. it seems like they couldn't come up with something for Trini. Yeah, what's Trini afraid of? Yeah. Uh, she's afraid of... Fear itself. Yeah. Uh, They've done worse. There's worse there. There is worse. There's better though. <laughs> um, Same thing happens again. Old mate Quagmire pops up and lets her know that she needs to think of a battle. I don't know what battle it was, but um, I'm sure Michael does. Oh, she flashes back to High Five, which I think was like episode two or yeah, three. Two, I think. Uh, <laughs> there's actually a great. She's like, she keeps saying, Billy, you're too high. And we get a great shot of Billy standing on the ground, looking down at himself, like, <laughs> I don't know, but I'm not, though. <laughs> um, and then she she remembers when that, that time they stepped out of the way and a pony patrol went flying off a cliff. Yeah, which really was a, her crowning achievement. That's the best thing she's ever done. She stepped out of the way once. She didn't get hit by a pony this one time. It was a good dodge. Yeah. We'll that. So, solid dodge. Yeah. <sighs> So then it's Billy's turn. Yeah. He flashes back to... Oh, what's Billy's fear? He, he just randomly starts doubting himself, he saying fears he's not that good enough. His science he's, isn't good enough. Yeah, his science yeah. isn't good enough. Yeah. Which, I mean, it isn't. <laughs> but, uh, doesn't he say... I don't know if... His he, calculations are right. I don't correct. think if we, cover, we covered this. I think at the start of the episode, he says, my calculations, the, there's a 95% chance of our power coins being this in way. this direction. Yeah. What calculations? Like, unless he's they're standing at one end of the island and he's calculated, well, I mean, odds are they're on the rest of the island. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I think Billy's calculations, I feel like the writers don't understand what that really means. <laughs> like, they think it's a psychic power calculating something. Um, that's basically how it's used. Yeah. But so, Billy flashes back to the Madame Wo fight. Yeah. Again, Better episode. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. He Quagmire tells him, you must believe in science and stuff, or else you'll never escape from the guff. Look, I'll be honest, rhyme is not my thing, but you guys are putting me in a position where I have to rhyme, okay? Um, you put yourself in this That's position. true. No man. one else here. So, we finally get to Jason. And Tom, do you want to explain to us what Jason's fear is? He, he, he seems to be fearing letting everyone else down and that he's not good enough for everyone else and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Not being good enough leader, I guess. Yeah. Which is, I think it's a nice kind of bit of characterization for him yeah. almost. Almost. That, that the thing he's afraid of isn't something happening to him, it's something happening to everyone else. Yeah. Which is why he's in charge. Yeah. And also because he's red. Yeah. That's why. That's really why he's in charge. Because <laughs> he, be, he happened to be wearing a red t-shirt one day. He got lucky. But, yeah, that's how it happened. He's leader now, so... Yep. Let's have to deal with that. And, um... Quagmire says something. But... 
he doesn't Quagmire says something like telepathically. We don't see Quagmire. He just speaks to Jason's brain. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit different that one. Look, I, I got nothing. Isn't this whole episode, man? I every step. Part of it, one was good. Yeah. Well, part, look, it wasn't bad. It was shaping up. To part be, one yeah. was about as good as a Power Rangers episode gets, yeah. right? This was about as good as a Power Rangers episode normally gets. I think this is a new low for the series. Especially. Really? <laughs> I do, yeah. I can't think of an episode that made me this angry and this disappointed in the show. That's expectations, though, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. It's not that this was substantially worse than usual. I think it was. It was that last repetitive. week we saw six monsters and we were ready for them to fight. And this week they all had to learn to believe in themselves. The monsters weren't even in this episode. No. Nope. Those six monsters. They started off with old mate disappearing, Zach disappearing and... Yep. All that, and it just sort of was the same thing again and again and again from there. And they clearly had the monster costumes there. Yeah. To use. But no. No. None no. of that. <laughs> no. Um, so Rita gets upset because her plan has basically been defeated. Yeah. So she... Okay, this is a bit weird. Yeah. She, like, grows giant. But did we mention the power coins? Oh, yeah. Sorry. So their power coins and communicators just appear. Yeah, because they were there the whole time. Oh. And they couldn't see them because they were afraid. Dumb. It, it was an illusion. Stupid. Dumb. S- spoiler what it was basically the end of Saw. Do <laughs> 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 you think that's how that happened? I don't think... You guys who wrote Saw watch <laughs> Power. I don't think when the power was inside you all along and you have to remove it with a scalpel. I don't know what that means. <laughs> no, I mean, have you seen the yeah, Saw? Yeah. yeah. It had the keys there the whole time at the start. You know. <laughs> um, so Rita grows giant. I guess for it to be like the end of Saw, they would have to have their hands cut off. Yes. And then see that they're, they're like, communicators were there the whole time. Yes. And then as they're dying, realise that they could have saved themselves earlier on. And then, and then Quagmire was Rita the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked that better. I would have liked anything better. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, she, Rita grows giant, grabs the island of illusion. Yeah. And shakes it. Yeah. And then blows it up with her wand. Doesn't she th- blow it up by throwing it? I thought she blew it up and then did magic on it. Yeah, maybe. But so, anyway, but the Power Rangers got off in time. It's yeah. fine. With their communicators, I guess? I don't quite understand as, why as, she didn't just... As soon as it exploded, they, like, activated their stuff and they simultaneously were back in their uh, robots and everyone was back on Earth and in the middle of the city. I don't understand why, when she sent them to the island, she didn't then blow up the blow island. Up the island. <laughs> yeah, that would have been much easier. <sighs> but I guess what happened was they... You found the communicators, turned them on, and Zordon was able to... Yeah, Zordon them. was able to teleport them back to the... The Zords. Zords. Yeah. Where they take out... Oh, they create the... I don't what? remember what that form is called. The Mega Dragon Zord? Yeah, but... So apparently the toxic foam... Yeah, is, in, with. is not That there. dissolved. They've been doing this other shit for like an hour. The yeah. toxic foam doesn't last. That's right. So immediately they decide to form the Mega Dragon Zord, yeah. which is just the Dragon Zord... Basically, just on top of the dinosaur. The dino yeah, well, it's like the, the Dragon Sword becomes a coat yeah. for the Mega Sword. A fine um, winter coat. It's it's the first step in the, the Titanus Ultra Zord. Yeah. But they don't get into Titanus yet. No, because at first they destroy. Uh, Mutantus. Whatever his name is. Mutantus. Mut- Mutantus. Uh, with a Z Dragon Ball. Yep. They shoot out an energy ball that has a big Z on it. For Power Rangers, as Michael said. <laughs> Z yeah. for Power Rangers. I guess for Zordon. I don't know. I mean, for Zyu Ranger. Yeah. But we're, we're not allowed to talk about that. No. And uh, then they get into the Titanus Carrier Zord. Yeah. And they form the Ultra Zord. Yeah. And they try to attack Lokar. Yeah. Well, they do. They hit him. But and he, he says, ah! And he disappears. Yeah. Which is weird, because he kind of looks like he's not physically there. Yeah. Like, he's sort of there in the... But apparently he has enough presence to be attacked by a giant laser. A giant turtle laser. And, you know, some weeks the giant dis- floating disembodied head of Satan gets blown up by a giant robot dr- dinosaur. Yeah. And some weeks it doesn't. Yeah, it's that's, that's not today. Well, I want to know, yeah. what have they been doing while we've been on the island of illusion? Patiently waiting. Because <laughs> Rita says something about, I'll send them to the island of illusion, and in the meantime, Mutantus will destroy the world. The world. 
very similar world. But he's probably waiting for readers like signal like, okay guys, you're cool, you're clear. But you why go. wouldn't you do it instantly? As <laughs> soon as the Rangers are out Michael, of commission. That's, that's not very fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maybe readers more fair than you think. Yeah. So then, so Lokar gets away. Yeah. And then... Do you think we'll see Lokar again? I, I guarantee that we will see Lokar again. Oh, really? Yeah. I just think it's unlikely to be. You know what's coming, I guess. I know Lokar is returning. Okay. Not for a while, I don't think. But, okay. Uh, and then came the second thing which made Matt swear out loud this week. Oh, straight as we cut brilliant. straight back to bulk dancing. I'd forgotten the dance competition was a thing. <laughs> and finding out once again that it was a thing greatly upset me. Because normally I'd be happy to get back to the end of the episode with yep. the real life stuff, but I was so over it at this point. Um, I was kind of hoping they'd just be done. So <laughs> bulk dances for a bit. He does... You know, he tries. He tries. We'll give him that. He's not great. He's the poor. judges give him zero, <laughs> one, and negative three. Now, <laughs> that, that seems generous. <laughs> if you'd seen the dancing, that seems awfully generous. I don't know what standard it's being judged on. Or what scale. <laughs> we don't see anyone compete other than Bulk and Zach. I wonder why they have a minus three card. <laughs> <I've seen laughs> She's much. taken her three and dropped <laughs> a sharpie and added a negative. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, that's so me. <laughs> uh, so Zach gets a perfect thirty. Yeah, and but the most incredible thing happens. Highlight of the so J- Jason says like funky tunes or something like that, and Kimberly says, "Yeah, who's the DJ?" And we get a focus pull through Zach. It's Quagmire. Dun dun dun! Killing it's Quagmire. <laughs> Dressed not like an elf, but in sunglasses and like a hip hop DJ, a beanie, a beanie, <laughs> wearing big, the big headphones on a pair, behind a pair of decks. Oh, it's he, amazing. He was killing it. It's here. amazing. If the whole episode was Quagmire DJ, <laughs> it would have been a thousand times better. Agreed. <laughs> I don't know that we'll ever see Quagmire again, but every time we see a dance or disco, I'm imagining that he is Angel Grove's the hope resident will be there. DJ. The hope's there. I think in my mind, just whenever we hear music now, <laughs> it'll just be him like scoring the show. <laughs> oh, because like he speaks to the audience. Clearly, he has some. Yeah, he has some sort of metatextual awareness. Yeah, he's like the Abed of Power Rangers. <laughs> oh dear. All right. So that was the Island of Illusion. Yeah. And the illusion was that we thought it might be good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, shh. I just, I yeah. wish that it wasn't 20 years ago and I could directly appeal to the writers to not be so shitty anymore. I mean, you can do that, but it, it won't fix the 20 years of Power Rangers that we have to get through. That's what I mean. Yeah. It won't retroactively better the show. I was all like, oh, two part episode. That'll be interesting. There'll be developments. Should be pretty cool. No. It was the it was better the subtle two part episode that we got with the super putties. Yes. That was a better two parter than this distinct two parter was. Yes. So that was Island of Illusion Part Two, I guess. Yeah. I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> That's alright. Sorry, this is your first experience with Power Rangers in a while. <laughs> yeah, nah. It was pretty pretty well how how it was remembered. <laughs> pretty similar. Uh, um, I'd like to remind people, I forgot to remind people last week, I might tag something on if I can do that. Yeah. In time. Uh, you should please fill out our survey. Oh, uh, yeah, our yeah. Our survey is still going. Um. A chance to win awesome prizes. I wouldn't go. I, Some a prizes. A chance to win a prize. Yeah. Well, there's, um, you get the Valentine's Day postcards that we did. Yes. And you also get a mystery prize. Yep. So that's multiple Whatever prizes. That is, that's a mystery. It is a mystery. Yeah, but I don't want to give people the impression that multiple people will win a prize. Oh, no, no. One person will win several prizes. No, we have a very limited budget, guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, no, we'd really appreciate it because obviously we want to make the show you want to hear, basically. Yeah. Um, and because we've got such a small listener base, I think now's a good time for you to have a pretty direct, powerful say. Frankly, if you fill out the survey, you could be the one who fills out the survey. So You'll probably win a prize and change the show. So that's exciting. You've got the power of God, basically. <laughs> I hope that's not offensive. Well, the, the power of a powerful you, man. Okay, you have the power of or great lady. Satan. <laughs> Is that better? That yeah. the power of great Satan. Much better. Is that yeah. somehow less offensive? We saved it. Uh, okay, we will be back next week with a new special guest, I think, but not sure yet. Who knows? Uh, 
with the episode The Rockstar. Oh. Which, I don't know, we'll see, I guess. Is it going to be Smash Bound Century? I, I hope so. I hope so. Hey, now they are an all-star. They yeah. should get their game on and go, go play. Go play, yeah. That's true. I've often said that about the Power Rangers. Yeah. Oh, boy. How often do we end on a Smash Mouth reference? <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> Not enough. That's the truth. Uh, okay, thank you guys very much for listening. Thank you, Tom, for coming along. Yes, no thank you, Tom. Guys. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye, everyone. See ya.